them out in the fairly certain knowledge that they are through to a final meeting with Down, first ever All Ireland final between the two. Tommy Carr there away in the background of that dugout. Good kick by Aiden Rooney. His Tommy Carr. Well, you wonder when Tommy comes in. He's coming in place of Jack Sheed. He was out of sorts today. And Tommy can play, of course, just about anywhere and has. Fergal Reynolds, the player who went off him for uh, Leitrim. Good, good ball from Paul Beelan towards Charlie Redmond. Redmond attracting attention instantly. This time the referee says, not overholding, free and instead to Dublin. Well, Tommy has played corner back, he's played, of course, at the half back line, he's played at the forwards. Very keen. Now to put a bit of pressure on the players in possession. Charlie judging it to a tee. Once in the second half, Leitrim wide just once, so fair amount of accuracy. Dublin particularly sharp in front of goal. Desi Farrell who got that third goal. Nicely back into Paul Beelan. Looks like going left, just about. And there's some despondent faces on the Leitrim dugout, but they've done well to get to this stage. Ollie Honeyman trying to urge them on. So just five minutes left. Colin McGlynn scored one of the goals here, the Leitrim goal. But Donoghue touching it down, but it's Brian Stein's Australian rule style picking it up. He had five years in that code with Melbourne, losing it to Pat Donoghue. Who's played steadily all through this match. He's been outstanding at times. Jason Ward, Liam Conlon. Nicely for Declan Darcy, trying to engineer another goal-scoring chance, perhaps. He'd be content with the point, and he ends up getting nothing. John O'Leary varying at this time, and it's Paul Clark. They're trying to give it away from Pat Donoghue in particular, which caused problems in the air for them. Towards Desi Farrell, very much on his game today, very sharp. And Charlie Redmond. It's been talked that he's thinking about finishing his career at the top. He's still got an awful lot to contribute. Likewise, Vinnie Murphy. That's broken down for Jason Ward to come on to. Our brother, it's Brian Dagnan. It's Colin McGlynn. He's pushing Dermot DC out of his way. The outside of the boot. Attempt to be fanciful, but in the end it is Paddy Moran. Down to Tommy Carr. Chance for him to get in possession. Big roar from the hill as he does so. Down to Paul Clark. Everything has been saluted at this stage by joyous Dublin fans. Maybe not that last pass. Call him a word about Leitrim today, part of a learning process, a very small county, tiny population, and uh, yet they've done well to get this far. Well, the achievement of winning the Connacht Championship for a county like that has been fantastic, and I suppose the difference between the standard of football that they have been used to and what is in Leinster is fairly reflected here. The game is faster, the players are stronger, probably fitter as well. And uh, would have been condescending to Connacht football. There is a bit of a bulk there, and it's very evident here today. But Leitrim have fought hard, and they certainly haven't given up. Some teams from Connacht in the past have come to Crow Park, and the players have dropped their heads and stopped trying. But you can't say that about Leitrim. Yep, they never died. That's for sure. Now Guyton, partly blocked that time by Brian Dykeman. Now Jerry Flanagan. When they reflect in the dark days of winter, they'll be thinking back later on that marvellous win in the Connor Championship, beating Ross Common, Galway, Mayo, what a win that was. And then coming here for the very first time, no mean achievement. Into Colin McGlynn again. Barney Breen is to his right, a support to his left as well. He 
He's going for glory. It's John O'Leary. Certainly Colin McLean could have done a good bit more with the possession he got today. There's several times he could have put Leitrim players in for scores and just held on too long. So another promising build-up here. Once again, it's Brian Dykeman. The player who was fouled was Jason Ward. So Leitrim just considering what they're going to do with this. Aidan Rooney, the free-taker. Leitrim with a goal and eight points on the board so far, as uh, Noel Moran, I think that is. Came into the match with a knee injury. He's taking his point. A fourth point for Aidan Rooney. And Dublin are emphatic winners against gallant champions from the West. It'll be Dublin versus Down in four weeks' time. What a final we're looking forward to there. Charlie Redmond today contributed a goal and six points. His goal 15 minutes into the first half. The killer blow, I suppose, for Leitrim was the goal by Mick Galvin. Two minutes into injury time in that half. And then Desi Farrell with 10 minutes to go fairly wrapped it up. A super goal. It's a match we've enjoyed. There have been some very good displays. And Dublin go through. Goals and 15 points. Leitrim, one goal and nine. So that's the situation that. Beat them, you know, you can beat them, and then the positive is that you probably beat them well. But you've got to prepare, you've got to work hard, you've got to get minds right, and that, uh, that was the hardest part, just getting minds right. You got three critical goals there today, one midway through the first half, and then just before half time as well. Yeah, the goal before half time was, uh, you know, the killer, killer for them because, uh, you know, they were hanging in there, then suddenly, you know, three, five points more further than at half time, and it gave us the lift we need just before half time, and the second half time was all in the traffic. It's been a good year, Jaron. Says that we won Connacht. It, it's uh, we're still disappointed with the result today. You know, there was 12 points in it or whatever, and we have no excuse. But I think the goal before half time put us under a lot of pressure, and it came at a bad time for us. And and uh, we tried to get back into the game immediately after half time, but they got the first score, and that's it. I mean, at the end, the third goal then killed us off really. Today we, we played we played well. We got the ball in early, we were moving well, and we got some good off-the-ball movement. And thankfully, at the end of the day, we got a few scores, and that's what we weren't getting re recently. It's now Dublin against Down in the final. Different proposition altogether. It is indeed. That's another day's walk, Chair. We're only 10 minutes after an all Ireland semi-final. Uh, Down are a very good team. They have very good forwards, and they're what I like about Down, they're well balanced throughout the team. There's no stars on it, from Conor Deegan to Mickey Linden, all the way to their goalkeeper. They're a very talented football team. We have a lot of homework to do over the next three weeks and I think it will be a good final. I'm just very disappointed that uh, the game didn't go better for us. Uh, I think uh, they got the goals at the right time, and particularly the goal just a minute before half-time. I think uh, it was a bit of a blow to us, and it was a great psychological blow to uh, Dublin at the time. And uh, they got a score early on in the second half as well, and that I think just gives them that bit of an edge on us. Oh, the early part of the game, we played our better football. I think we had prepared for that situation about, you know, about the possibility of freezing and so on, and we didn't, we didn't freeze because we had prepared well and, and in, in, the, in a mental sense, and we got we got it in right there. But the goals, as I said, we keep coming back to the goals, but really they were the difference at the end of the day. I don't think it really got to us at any stage. The occasion never got to us at any stage. No way. When you reflect on the year, much later on, deep into the winter, what will you be thinking? Well, I think of uh, the day that we won the Connacht Championship, because after 67 years, I think it was a tremendous year for our Leeds and football, and uh, that's the one we'll, be, we'll remember. Will you come back? There's no doubt about it. As John said, it's easy to say on, on days like these that you'll be back, but we will be back, because the following that we have, and that's why I'm terribly disappointed for our supporters, but we'll be back. Well, there's absolutely no reason at all that they shouldn't and it's still going to be marked down as a good year for Leitrim football. Let's take a check then on uh, today's scoreline. Well, Leitrim people at Croke Park today. Now, before we get into the serious analysis, Colm, you want to appease your father, first of all, a good man from Ahavash, isn't it, down in Leitrim? That's right. Who yeah. wants you to say something good about your native county. Well, I think he thought that I was uh, <laughs> after turning Turk on him, but uh, I suppose my love of football originated in Leitrim and uh, my uncle Maliki played for Leitrim won a Connacht title, so did a, a cousin Michael Moore and my cousins uh, Sean and Leo Heslin played for Leitrim and my brothers played for Leitrim and uh, my sister married a, a, 
and Leitrim footballer Terry Blesson. So I suppose I have to say that I was neutral in favour of Leitrim today. So if you had been playing your cards right, you could have been playing in today's All Ireland semi final. I could. It might be the last <laughs> chance I get to play when I'm as, I might just have blown it. All right, Colm, as we said, it was a fabulous occasion to see Leitrim uh, in Croke Park today. But the reality of it is, at the end of it all, Dublin, as most people expected, are in the All Ireland final and really as easily as a lot of people expected as well. Yeah, I'd say a lot of Leitrim people came today and were just hoping that the team wouldn't be annihilated because that has really been what's happened to every Connacht kind of representative for the last few years. And I think Leitrim put up a very good show for about three quarters of the game. But in the end, class told. Mm -hmm. And Dublin really won with a lot in hand and uh, really the last 20 minutes of the game were exhibition stuff. The interesting thing about it was that we were all afraid that Leitrim would get a drubbing in the early stages of the game. In other words, they'd get a terrible start and the game would be over before it began. In fact, that wasn't the case. They scored some good scores in the first 15 minutes or so. Yeah, Dublin actually looked the more nervous team early on. They had a lot of chances. And then Leitrim turned around and got uh, three very good points. And here we have the first one, the historic point from Noel Moran overlapping. I think that the bookies were given odds on who would be the first Leitrim player to score in Crow Park and Noel Moran I say would be, have been a long shot. And then yeah. with Aidan Rooney following up with a very good point from play as well. And Declan Darcy putting over a very good long range free. And at that stage after about 15 minutes Leitrim were leading three points to one and uh, were playing very well. Dublin had missed a lot of easy chances at that stage and, and seemed quite nervous. But then uh, Dublin got completely on top then for about 10 or 15 minutes and, and really I thought that uh, the damage was done by the Charlie Redmond goal in particular. In actual fact, Dublin were finding the route to goal quite easily today. Might have scored another few. Now we're going to look at the four goals in the game, the three Dublin goals, one Leitrim goal. Before we do that, just want to bring up another point with you because it leads into the, the Charlie Redmond goal. Billy Meehan in Enfield said it was an enjoyable game today, but he thought there was a lot of dubious hand passes by Dublin. There was at least five occasions when he felt the referee should have blown the whistle for throwing the ball. And Jerry Brady from Kilcullen also phoned in today, and there have been many phone calls about this. Dublin players were throwing the ball up and hitting it with the same hand. Now I'd like to ask you about that, but first of all, let's look at these goals because this was a factor in the first goal that Dublin scored. Yes, it certainly is. Uh, I, I did comment on this actually during the game. Now Jack Sheedy, I'd say, I'm sure went for a point there, drop short. Charlie gets it. Well, you know, it could have been a free out, it could have been a penalty there, but uh, I think that pass from uh, Desi Farrell is certainly a. a, a a throw, and mm -hmm. I think that Desi has that style of hand passing. Now, this second goal, really a great goal because Paddy Moran gets the ball and kicks it 60 yards, and nothing better to open up a defence. Now, Guyton following up at speed. Mick Galvin involved in the movement three times, gives it off to Mick Deegan, takes it, and buries it in the net. Great and goal. Great yeah. goal. If, if he didn't score it, I'm sure Charlie would have been upset because he was inside waiting yeah. for the pass. Um, later, in fairness, too, got a very good goal as well. Barney Breen does well, draws the defence and puts it inside and Colin McGlynn sticks it low under John O'Reilly and that's not very easy. Mm. But again, Dublin were able to reply nearly at will and they had about eight goal chances today. Desi Farrell, who had an absolutely excellent match, the best match I've seen for him for a long time, takes mm. his time, sticks it away very, very coolly. Again, Charlie free on the outside there. The two, the two of them, I thought in particular, absolutely wreaked havoc for mm. Dublin. They had the beating of their man. They were out in front all the time. They were working well together. Every time one of them got the ball, the other seemed to be available for a pass. And they scored. Uh, the two of them, I think, scored more than the entire Leitrim total. Yes. Briefly, let's just go back then to that hand pass situation. Now, Martin McHugh in our panel this afternoon was also making this point that it's the style that the Dublin players seem to have of just sort of throwing the ball off. Yes, well, you're supposed well, some of the Dublin players anyway. Y yeah, I think Vinnie Murphy and Desi Farrell ha have similar style with the hand pass, and a lot of it will come down to who's in charge of the final, whether that hand pass will be allowed. You're supposed to have a striking action, yes. so if you have the ball up, you have to have the other hand. You can't have the other hand on it and do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's very much up to the referee's interpretation on it, but a lot of referees would give those as fouls, certainly. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's an interesting thing that uh, struck us about today's match. To go back to one aspect of today's game, or an aspect of Dublin's play which is important to them, John O'Leary's goalkeeping, obviously, in his experience, is a very big factor at this stage, but also his kickouts, which are inclined to hit big Dublin players in the middle of the field. He has options. Yes, I picked out a few uh, pieces here which show quite clearly. Uh, Dublin have very, very big, strong players around the middle of the field, and they can vary their kickouts. Mm -hmm. There we have Brian Steins taking one of them. and. Uh, I suppose John O'Leary would say that he aims for these fellas all the time anyway. Pat Gilroy breaks it down to Paul Tart there. 
He has a big kick of the ball though, John, isn't he? He has, a, he has a big kick, but he puts the ball out here now to the, the left-hand side. Vinnie Murphy coming up, and Vinnie Mur Murphy had a very good game as well. I suppose that was another reason Declan Darcy was quiet enough for them. Yeah. Here we have Jack Sheedy coming down to collect one. And uh, in the second half here again, right out to right half-back to Paul Clark. So Dublin have five or six big players around the middle of the field, and uh, Leitrim today really weren't able to cope with that sheer physical size and strength that Dublin had in that particular area of the pitch. In Gaelic games, obviously, you cannot beat having big players out there. No, and Down have big players, and that's, I think, where, where Dublin are, are going to be able to match Down, because yeah. uh, Down, for all their matches in Ulster, and again last Sunday, again, they had a, a, an advantage over Cork in sheer physical strength, and they won't have it over, that, over Dublin. OK, Colin, let's just have a look at some more of the phone calls that have come through. It was Sean Flynn in Magenta Hall in Santry. He says that he was delighted to be associated with Leitrim today. They did very well. Not as bad as the score says, but he also wants to wish Dublin the very best of luck in the final. Patrick White just uh, called to make the point that Le the Leitrim attack was bad, but the defence was strong. And I think that would be a fair assessment of it. They played reasonably well in defence, yes, but uh, they didn't have the firepower up front. I suppose that, that would be a fairly accurate assessment. Leitrim actually scored similar to what they have been getting in Connacht. You know, they got a goal and nine points today, and a total of 12 was a sort of around what they've been getting in the games up to now. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was fine in Connacht, but when they come up today, it just wasn't enough because Dublin had a, a forward line which was really on song today. But again, Leitrim have nothing to be ashamed about. They came up and they fought very hard and they fought right to the bitter end, and none yeah. of their players ever threw in the towel. And I think that's great credit to them. Oh, sure, yeah. Glenn Tracy in Temple Oak says he doesn't know why everybody was saying it was going to be as close a match. It turned out to be a stroll for Dublin. And a Longford caller rang in to say that he loves Leitrim and he felt that the Dubs had no right to lay it on so heavy today, seeing that it was Leitrim's first time in Croke Park. Well, that's all right, I suppose, to say that, but when you're out playing for an All Ireland semi final place, you just keep your foot in the pedal. Oh, no, he, that caller is dead right. Dublin should have eased <laughs> off considerably and only won by two or three points. <laughs> all right, Colin, what about the future for Leitrim football? Where do they go from here? Well, it. Leitrim probably have a team now that could go on and win next year's Connacht title. Now the reality of the situation is that they haven't got a team who are good enough to win in All-Ireland, are nearly good enough to win mm. in All-Ireland. That mightn't uh, go down too well in Leitrim, but they're a long, long way from that level of football. Because Dublin have played three or four matches against very tough opposition, whereas Leitrim are playing games against opposition which are obviously 10 points worse than that mm -hmm. in Connacht. Sure. So for Leitrim to make that step up of 10 points is a phenomenal leap, and they would need another two or three good forwards to do that. Mm -hmm. OK. Who did you pick as your man of the match from this one? Well, I suppose the easiest thing to say every week is that it was a very difficult decision. Um, there was nothing different about today. I thought the two Dublin corner forwards were absolutely brilliant, both of them. But I didn't give it to a Dublin man. That won't go down well with the dubs. But Charlie Redmond, anyway, has that man he watches at this stage. He could open up a jeweller's shop, so there's no point in giving him another one. But the player I picked out who I thought was superb today was Seamus Quinn at full back for Leitrim. And I picked out a few of the things. I think from start to finish, he, he was outstanding. He's and been one of the best full backs in the country, in actual fact, all year. Yes, he had a very good Connacht final as well. And uh, the one thing about him was he's only 21, he's under 21. He was decisive. Everything he decided to do, he did it. And the other thing I liked about him was that whenever he did get possession, he didn't do anything silly. Mm. He always played the ball out at uh, best advantage to his team. Uh, and it was one player, too, who had the, the bit of power there, was able to withstand the tackle from Vinnie Murphy, which is not that easy. Sure. Again, played it out. And here, standing behind Vinnie, makes a superb catch, which, again, is not easy. Again, the hand pass out to one of his own man, men. Nothing spectacular about it at all. And then... McGalvin does get away from here the first half and makes a, a great block on him, push the ball out for a 45. Yeah, it was excellent stuff today by uh, Seamus Quinn. I think he's shortlisted himself for an All-Star Award perhaps this year. Last bunch of phone calls for the moment, Wayne Riley in Dublin. Why do the two teams only parade around half the stadium today and not parade in front of Hill 16? And Patrick Manog from Dublin also says, uh, why don't the teams march past Hill 16 when they come onto the pitch? Indeed, it does seem like a, a pity. And finally, from Brady O'Sullivan, is Colm a born-again Dubliner, if he wants to know? Oh, absolutely not. I stick with the Royal. But I, I, I couldn't agree more with the callers about the parade because in the Leinster final, the same thing happened. The parade turned at halfway. And I, I did actually comment on that before today's game. I thought the parade should have gone right the way down around Hill 16 and back up under the Hogan stand because it is a traditional part of the game. And I think it's something that everybody likes to see the parade of players going right around wherever they are in the stadium. Sure. All right, Colin, thank you for the moment. Right, then uh, we're going to leave.